it's often more difficult for young women than it is for men. Because some men in patriarchal societies have this role of this view of this idea of what women should be and how far they should go. That your success is at home. Your success is raising the children. Your success is this. Your success is that. And so, and then we try to paint them into a box. But they're just raring to break out of that box. Hey, Dad, I need to do something more. I want more for my life because I want to be in a better position to help you when you're older. I can't do that at home, Dad. And so they break norms. And so as an active leader in your life, you have to break norms. You have to have the courage to break norms. Are you willing to break norms in your life for your career, for what you want? Are you willing to break norms? No, you're going to stay, you're going you're gonna to do what's supposed to be done. You're never going to go outside the line. And what I, mean, what I mean by that is that, are you willing to take a chance on yourself? Uh, yes. Are you willing to risk it so that you can have your optimal success? You see, again, from the beginning we said you have to be able to put something on the line. They have this old adage, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You have to have some skin in the game. What are you willing to put in the game so that you can win? What do you look at as, what, what do you consider to be success? Uh, success, uh, just discovering the kind of person I need to be in order mm. to get where I, need, huh. where I want. Discovering the type of person I need to be to get to the place I want to be in. That word discovery keeps coming up. You will always be in a process of discovery because you're always in a mindset of learning. As long as you're breathing, you're learning. Whether you're consciously learning or unconsciously learning, you're still taking things in because you're interacting with your environment. You're interacting with your environment. Therefore, you're always learning, consciously and unconsciously. So what do we do with that conscious and that unconscious learning? How do we combine them? Because that, this is how you use unconscious learning. There are things and situations that you are uh, uh, that come up on you that you've never been exposed to in your life, but you tend to know how to deal with them. It's based on unconscious learning. No one had to teach you, but you learned it through observation. So learn to be an observer of your environment. Observe people. Observe habits, especially your own. Especially your own habits so that you can have what you need to get to the place where you need to be. Les Brown, who's a, uh, a communicator, who's a public speaker and a motivator, he goes around the world and he teaches. And he said that he's kid this course and so it gets, people make this statement to him, what I want to do is so hard. And Les Brown told them, if it's hard, do it hard. If it's hard, do it hard. That means you just need to apply a little bit more energy. You need to apply a little bit more effort in order to get the results that you want. The results that you want. So who has a question that's burning in them that they want to have an answer to? I may not have it, but it'll be good to ask it. Who has a question? Yes, sir. So um, how do you know that being an effective leader is really valuable? And let me, let me ask a more specific question. Mm -hmm. Is being a leader always valuable for everything that you do, for all, you know, what you value? What if what you value, you know, uh, might not entail being a leader or might be following something, even if it's a higher cause? And that causes everybody not to necessarily be leaders uh, of their own design, but of somebody else's design. Mm -hmm. you, could, you would actually become a leader by default because so many people become leaders not seeking the position of leadership. And this is what I mean by that. There are times when you will be following someone, but because you follow them so well, you're being successful at following. But other people that you're not aware of are watching you. There are students in classrooms that are watching how you study. They're watching how you answer questions. So you're leading and not even aware of it. So again, there's conscious leadership and unconscious leadership. So you're still leading, not aware that it's an effect. Because someone may approach you 15 years from now. Man, don't you know, I, I was in your class, 
and I observed the way you did X, Y, and Z, and that encouraged me to do this thing. That encouraged me in the work that I'm doing because of how I saw you respond. And so you're always leading. We just don't always accept the mantle of leadership. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think she had a question first. Yeah. yeah. Um, you said that to find what I am gifted mm -hmm. and then like, I can stop being what I'm good at. So mm -hmm. how do you find your gifted? How do you find what you get to that? Great question. One of the things that you do is find, to find your gifts is to look at those things that, are, that come naturally to you that no one has to give you instruction on, no one has to kind of give you, um, uh, kind of tell you day to day and prod you to do it. You do it naturally. You there, because there are oftentimes things that we do, we say, man, how did I know how to do that? Or someone will ask you, how do you know that? How do you have that capability? Where did you learn that? And you say, I don't know. Because you really don't know. It's just something that is ingrained in you that is a natural gift, a natural thing in you. And when it is a gift, it's natural. You refine it by doing it more and more. But it is natural. So look at yourself, analyze. What do you do that is so natural to you that you can do it in your sleep and it's always effortless? Look for those types of things in your life to determine what your gifts are. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Your perception of success is to be responsible for the consequences of your action. Yes. But we also make, uh, like you say, take risks to break mm -hmm. norms, to go out on a line. Yes. Um, so how do you make sure you stay within the safe harbor, as I say? You don't always want to be safe. Taking a risk means going out on a limb. There are calculated risks, but there are also unintended consequences yeah. of risk. And so you cannot, don't box yourself in by the fear that you might fail. Don't box yourself in because you might fall short. What if you go be above and beyond? You see, sometimes there are unintended consequences of success. So don't box yourself in by that thing called fear. Fear will limit you. Fear will stop you in your tracks. Fear will stop you from, uh, from moving forward because of what you perceive as being unknown. Realize that you learn as you go. I mean, I mean, I understand that there's mm -hmm. nothing uh, fear, uh, but fear yourself. Mm -hmm. But you also lead people, and people count on you right. on every action or every decision you take. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm asking. Like, how do you make sure that uh, your decision will effectuate so that mm -hmm. you can compromise the success of the whole? Right. Mm -hmm. And so you want to look at how what you're going to be doing is going to affect other people so that it is not a negative impact yes. upon them. Because you can be successful in what you're doing, yet it negatively affects someone else. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that you must do is be willing, again, when we talk about adjustments, make whatever adjustments you need to make. So as a business owner, as a leader, as an engineer, you're going to look at and anticipate the possible outcomes. And so you create what we call, um, I mean, what I used to do for a lot of things that I do, I do mind mapping. And so this is my idea, and these are all the consequences that I see. Now, this con if I do this, it's going to affect this, and it's going to affect this. But sometimes when you do this, it affects something over here. So you have to anticipate what are the impacts to the circle. So mind map your strategy. Always go into your process with a strategy. But realize that sometimes there are going to be casualties. Sometimes there are going to be casualties. But you can mitigate them, and then you can always go back and mend what was broken. Yeah, let me get some of that. Yeah, let's finish the question, but just, mm -hmm. just to summarize that, yes. uh, what I get from you is mm -hmm. the effective leadership model is to be more proactive about mm -hmm. what's coming up, any unintended consequences, yes. and the uh, measure to take on those yes. instead of being more react uh, reactive or more yes. in pace. Exactly. Yes. Being proactive so that you can. This, I, I created a workshop just recently, and it's called um, Responsive Leadership. This is a responsive leadership re workshop requires you to do exactly that, to be active and not reactive. Because there's a process that, we, that I'm developing is called think, act, and only if necessary, react. 
And so if you think your way through a process versus reacting to a situation, you will have a better outcome. Because when you react, it's almost knee jerk and you haven't had a chance to look at the intended and unintended consequences. So if you act, if you think before you act, you won't have to react. Reacting is only a, a last resort in your process. Yes, sir. Um, what do you think about our weakness being our strength? That ties into your perspective of how you consider it, how you look at it, and what you consider your weaknesses. Because when you look at what you consider to be a weakness, give me, give me, let me ask you this question. What do you consider to be a weakness in you? Um, procrastination. Procrastination. Okay. And so, what you can do is, we talk about tweaks, adjustment. Look at that, that word procrastination just a little bit differently. Instead of you saying it procrastination in a negative way, look at only, well, I'm thinking about another outcome. And so I'm thinking about alternative solutions. And so you're not procrastinating, you're just taking time to think. And so your perspective creates your reality. Think about your situation and what you want to accomplish in the long term so that you don't put negative connotations on what you're doing. Therefore, you're able to see yourself in a more positive light by phrasing what you're doing a little bit differently. Yes, sir. Uh, so, a couple questions. You mentioned that leaders are healthy mentally, physically, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. I understand the uh, mental part is being able to celebrate your victories mm -hmm. and celebrate others' victories right. you know, without being attached to, hey, you know, I want mm -hmm. that, you know. Right. Uh, being able to put yourself in environments where you aren't always on top, right. but you're able to bring them together for a common purpose. Mm -hmm. Physically, as in taking care of yourself, right? Also, right. the whole eating and the blood site. Right. Uh, what exactly do you mean spiritually? Mm -hmm. the connecting. It, it's, it's about making a connection because and the connection with something outside of yourself and being in harmony. Because there is a thing called alignment. And if you're in alignment with your environment and the atmosphere around you is conducive to you being your optimal best, that's spiritual awareness and spiritual alignment with what you're going. Now, as a pastor, I have one perspective that I have. But as a teacher, I have another perspective. But they're, they're pretty much aligned. But what I want to tell you about the spiritual alignment is that you have to be in harmony. Your actions align with your thoughts, and your thoughts reflect your reaction. So can I ask a question out of that? Yes. So then, why is leadership valuable? Because of that, if we have to think about you know, our actions, but we also have to think about, well, what am I thinking about? Mm -hmm. So that they're, they're aligned. Right. Well, you know, we're here all assuming that leadership is great, but mm -hmm. why do we assume that leadership is important in, you know, in this mm -hmm. world? Right. And, and it is important because there are every, like we said, every person in this room came up with a different definition of, of leadership, but they were all similar. And so we look at what is similar and what we have in common versus what is dis, dissimilar about ourselves. And so leadership is that same way. We have a different we, we're, both, we're all bringing different perspectives to the definition. And so it will mean something different to all, all of us. However, the outcomes can be the same. I get what I want. I have what I need. I'm being, becoming who I want to be. I guess I'm just asking, mm -hmm. you know, is becoming what you want to be the right thing? Or is that good for you or other people? Sometimes I want certain things, but I realize right. that's, that's mm -hmm. detrimental to my health. Right. It could be detrimental to others. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not, not in like right. a dangerous way, but, but right. you get the idea too. Sure. You know, it depends mm -hmm. on what you value. Right. Uh, That's um, the key right there, what you value. Because it becomes about you. Again, leadership first begins with yourself. Know where you want to go. Direct yourself. Self-directed leadership is directing yourself in the direction that you want to go. And so when you concern yourself with where you're going, and if your mindset is that I'm going to be successful so that I can help others, then all of your actions are going to be in alignment with that mindset. And so you're going to, be find, you're going to find that you're, you're, you have a greater capacity to accomplish those goals if you are aware of how they're impacting you. Hey, Robert, I was just going to say we have time for probably one more question, and then mm -hmm. um, all right. I need to just wrap it up. So. All right. OK, I'll be it. OK, thank you. Um, what you said is uh, about tolerance to risk 
uh, mm -hmm. towards the risk, which I uh, most agree. Right. And uh, also, uh, you mentioned about uh, consume and surround you with more people, mm -hmm. uh, which have higher capabilities yeah. and abilities. Uh, how can we find those people in life? Because sometimes they're just quiet and they're hidden right. in their own abilities. So yes. I want to know what, how. Mm. Okay, there are a couple of ways by which you can encounter individuals. Firstly, the one of the best ways by which you can encounter different people is start to think differently. Because I want to pledge this into your spirit. You are a magnet. You will attract to you most often what you think about. And so when you are ready, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And so when you begin to think about the type of success that you want and the type of people you want in your life, someone who has those capabilities and those qualities will automatically just appear before you. They will come into your sphere of influence by way of somebody you know. You can go to a seminar. You can go... You can, you can research a company that, has the, that does the type of work that you want to do. And then you just email one of the top people in that company and say, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm interested in getting into this field of expertise. Can I have an opportunity to meet you and share with you some of my ideas because I'm looking for a mentor? Ask for mentors. Ask people who are successful to mentor you so that you can draw in their knowledge because a mentor will expose you to the things, the people, the opportunities, and the resources for you to become successful. They will do that for you. All right. Thank you guys very much. All right. All right. So like I said, if you see Robin around campus, you know, come talk to him. Yeah. And, uh,